Hi everybody, this is Coach International Master Roderick Neva and now we're gonna talk about the game happened between Super Grandmaster Daniil Dubov of Russia versus Super Grandmaster Ivan Sarik of Croatia in this ongoing FIDECHES.com uh, Grand Swiss. Alright, so we are now in round number 6 out of 11 rounds. I believe this is one of the best game happened in round number 6. So let's get started. Dubov played E4, Sarik played C5, Knight of 3 d6 then bishop b5 he called as the sicilian moscow variation then he covered with knight d7 castle a6 to neutralize immediately the bishop on b5 and he goes back with bishop d3 knight gf6 develop then c3 so in this kind of pawn structure with c3 then e4 with bishop d3 so this is what we called as the alapin delayed variation and now he played b5 a4 to destroy immediately the queen side, then bishop b7 to develop and to protect the rook on a8 to neutralize the pressure along the a file. And he took with a takes b5, a takes b5, rook takes a8, then queen takes a8, and it follows with knight a3 to attack the pawn on b5. Then black played b4, and this is the new idea in this position. Completely new game. Because... Uh, in 2018, black simply took the pawn on e4, and it follows with knight takes b5, threatening knight c7 check, having fork, double attack, but then uh, straight away, black took again the knight, then queen takes the bishop, queen takes, g takes, and knight h5. It seems black delays a lot of developments so far, alright? So let's go back. So after knight a3, then uh, Sarik went b4. Then it follows with knight b5, threatening knight c7, double attack. Then queen a5 to cover up the c7 square. And white took the pawn, c takes b4, c takes b4, and bishop c4. Alright, so Dubov spotted the f7 square. So yeah, maybe he smells something uh, creative attack towards the king side. And let's continue. Then uh, Sarik took the pawn. Then d3 neutralized the knight. Then d5. The best defense is to counterattack. That's why Sarik countered with a threat on bishop c4. And now Dubov played bishop f4. What a fantastic move. So bishop f4. Again, uh, with a threatening knight c7 check. Destroying the king. And now, Sarik played e5, alright, to block that strong diagonal. But then, let us investigate further what will happen if, like, for example, uh, black will take the bishop, and then now comes with knight c7 check, king d8, and d takes e4, alright, and producing a very strong pressure along the d file. And now, like, for example, bishop takes e4, and it falls with knight e5. Threatening checkmate, queen takes d7, and also threatening knight takes f7 check with double attack. Alright? And like for example, king moves away from d5 with king c8, and now knight d5. Simply play knight d5, um, e6, then go back with knight e3, attacking the c4 that covers the c file, and uh, in this position, uh, white has the upper hand. Okay? So... Let's go back, and now Sarik played e5 here, then Dubov took the pawn, d takes bishop, and d takes c4. Alright, so it seems like very normal, but uh, Stockfish evaluated this move as blundered move. Blunderacious. Alright, so let's go back. So better was queen h5 attacking the f7 pawn. And now we have two options to defend the threat. To prevent the queen takes f7, something like that. So let us examine first what if black would take on knight on b5. Then we have queen takes f7 check, king d8, and d takes e4, opening up the d file. So threatening rook d1 check. And now if black captures the knight on e5, then bishop takes e5, queen takes e5, and white would simply capture the bishop. So we have rook d1 check coming and also rook a1 threatening rook a8 check. Alright, so king at the center is quite dangerous for black. Okay, 
And also, we have Rook D1 coming. Very dangerous indeed. All right, so let's go back. Um, after Queen H5, what if Black will play G6 to stop the coming Queen takes F7? And now we have Knight takes C4, threatening uh, counter threat on the Queen on A5. And like, for example, if Black will take the Queen, then Knight takes A5 with a threat on Bishop on B7. And Knight to E, Knight E C5 to move away from threat and also to protect the Bishop on B7. Then we have Rook E1 check. All right. So in this position, uh, like for example, Bishop E7, then simply Knight D6 check. So if King F8, then we have simple Bishop H6 check, King G8, then Rook takes Bishop. And White gains decisive advantage. All right. And after knight d6, like for example, uh, black goes king d8. And then now uh, we have knight d takes b7 check. Then knight takes b7, knight takes b7, king c8. Then simply rook takes bishop, king takes knight, then rook takes knight. And white wins with extra piece. All right? Decisive advantage for white. So let's go back with queen h5. So the correct move is queen h5. Excellent move for white. All right, but then let's go back to uh, Dub of Choice. He took the pawn, d takes c4, and Sarik captured the knight. Bishop takes e5. Then Sarik went bishop c5 to gain tempo. Very fast development with pressure towards the f2 pawn, but uh, the stockfish evaluated this move as blunderacious. All right, so better was f6. Simply f6 to neutralize the bishop. And it follows with rook e1, queen b6, threatening the pawn on f2. Because if black will take the bishop on e5, then white, queen h5 check, king d8. Obviously, if g6, then we have queen takes e5. Then um, we will get the rook. And now, let's go with king d8. Then rook d1 check. Obviously, if black goes to king c8, then queen e8, and it made follows. So let's go back. So after rook d1 check, black forced to play bishop d6 to cover up the check. Then queen takes e5. All right, total destruction towards the black king. And if black continues with rook e8, then it follows with rook takes bishop, knight takes d6, queen takes d6 check, then king c8, and now h3 simply to release the background weakness and the black queen still not able to move somewhere like for example queen d8 looking uh neutralization for the queen but then we have knight a7 checkmate matchas and if queen a1 check and just simply move up then there's nothing black can do all right but black continues with rook e1 check here king h2 then h6 Queen f8 check, king d7, queen takes g7 check, then rook e7, queen g4 check, rook e6 cover, queen g7 check, king c8, queen g8 check, king d7, then queen g7 check. There's a lot of check coming. Alright, so here in this position, black is not able to uh, play with king c6 because of queen d4. White gets the initiative, the decisive advantage. Uh, we have queen d5 check, threatening to capture the rook on e6. So, it looks like Sug Zhuang. Like, for example, queen b6, then queen d5 checkmate. Alright? So, that's uh, those are the continuations. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Alright. So, he didn't see the f6, and he went bishop c5, and now bishop d6. He really don't let the black king to get safe. All right. So bishop d6. Then now bishop takes d6. Knight takes d6 check. Knight takes d6. Queen takes d6. In this position, then white has rook e1 coming. And it's quite very, very dangerous. So black should play bishop c8 here. And rook e1 check. Bishop e6 to cover. Then now rook d1. So Freezing the position, freezes the position to avoid any black's development, especially the king's safety for black, the castling. Sarik went queen a8 and now c5. So look at look at the position. So it freezes the black 
to develop himself. And now queen c8, then c6. Now h5 to get more space in the king side with a plan of uh, rook h6 to get some threat on the queen on d6. And now rook e1. All right. Then it follows with f4, f5 coming. Now rook h6, then rook e5. At some point, threatening uh, or plans with rook b5, threatening rook b8 to win the queen on c8. But then um, in this position, based on the strong computer engine, h3 would preferably favors white here. So h3 releasing the back rank weakness. And at this point, Black is not able to move somewhere. So it's Sugzwang. All right. So rook h6. And now Dubov went rook e5 and queen d8. Hoping for queen trades. But then um, Dubov captured the pawn. Queen takes b4. Then now queen c7 threatening the rook. And queen c5. So at this point, if you're looking on the evaluation bar. So the evaluation remains equal but look at the position it's quite annoying for black all right so we have different eye view the computer eye view and the human eye view so in computer computer eye view it's equal but uh, in human nerve i think it's quite annoying for black and white is winning here and now queen e7 then queen c3 queen c7 again to avoid the progress of the pawn c7 and Dubov follows with b4, threatening b5, and then b6, then c7. And now, he played king e7, and now b5, threatening b6, and now rook h8. So, supports his back rank immediately. So, in this position, b6 is not able or it's not effective anymore. And now, um, Dubov played queen g3 with a very simple trick. With rook takes bishop. So, yeah, can you please imagine? Rook takes bishop and then wins the queen. So, that's the simple threat of queen g3. But when it comes to accuracy, um, white should play rook e1 here with the direct threat towards the g7 pawn. Okay? So, that's the accurate move. And now, let's go back to Dubov's plan with queen g3. And now, um, Sarik played rook g8, threatening rook d1 check. And releases the back rank weakness with h4. And now Sarik played king f8 and evaluated as blunder ratios again. So yeah, at this point, black should play rook d1 check here. And after king h2, then simple king d8. Based on computer, black is still fine here. Okay. So let's go back now with king f8. And now at this point... Dubov released the unexpected brilliant move in this position. I'll give you a couple of seconds to pause the video and after that, we will go through the game. Okay, start. Thank you very much and congratulations who spotted the correct move. Now, Rook takes Bishop. Okay, sacrifice. And it continues with Queen takes G3. F takes g3, F takes e6 with the idea of c7, a very strong marching pass pawns towards the promoting squares. And now, Sarik played king e7. So, Stockfish evaluated this move as bad move, but I think it's totally hopeless anymore. Even if black plays um, rook c8, then white has b6 followed with b7 and like for example king e7 then b7 maybe this is the only chance to prolong the game but then still losing for black rook takes e7 and then promote with the queen rook d7 but then after like for example queen h8 picking up the pawns with queen takes h5 or queen takes g7 so the game favors for white all right so let's go back all right, to uh, Sarik played king e7 and Dubov simply took the rook with queen. King takes d8 and king f2 convert in a very simple king and pawn ending. King e3, king b6, king d4, then king takes b5, then king e5. And at this point, uh, Sarik resigned the game. All right, so why? Because like for example, let's put some a little bit moves here. 
After king c4, then we have king takes e6, then king d4, um, king f7, and let's say uh, king e3, then king takes g7, king f2, then king g6, king takes g3, king takes h5, and king takes g2, then king g5 with unstoppable pawn promotion. This is all about the game of Dubov and Sarik, and let's take a look on the updated standing. After round number six, we have four, five players tied with 4.5 points with MVL, Nair, Sasikiran, and Alex C. Shiro. And this is the pairing for round number seven coming. Okay, Feruja versus Nair, Sasikiran versus MVL, Esipenko versus Alex C. Shiro, and Caruana Fabiano versus uh, Sevian Samuel, also from USA. Okay, right after the round number seven, we will pick the best game that we are going to analyze in our channel. For those who haven't yet subscribed in our channel, please do subscribe to get more updates in my coming videos. Once again, thank you very much for having your time watching this video. And I hope you learned and update a lot in this video. Thank you very much once again.